Didn't he do something? <sighs> Keep your wits, man. It wasn't your fault. He led you on. He kept talking of the kingdom, right? What kingdom was he talking about? Here is the kingdom. This is the kingdom, not some stupid wish in the sky. This, earth, flesh and blood, something you can touch. Why wouldn't he understand that? I tried to make him see. When Mary poured that perfume on his feet, it was all I could do to contain myself. Do you know how many men, armaments that would have bought? Hundreds. But he wouldn't consider it. He kept rambling on about turning the other cheek, loving your enemies. Never. Rome has subjugated my people long enough. 
That's why I thought he could make a difference. People listened to him. He didn't have to say a word. He'd just show up, and hundreds would gather around him. Do you know what that means? He could have said one word and raised an army. One word! I thought that we were about to do that. I mean, when we rode into the city, the place went crazy for him. People cheering, laying palm branches everywhere, even throwing money. We could have done something. But he wouldn't. He wouldn't. That's why I thought I could tip his hand, pull him out of the clouds. It wasn't the money. It was taking back what was rightfully ours, standing up to the Roman swine. If we could have done that, all the money that we needed or wanted would have been ours. That's all I wanted. Why didn't he do something? He knew. When I embraced him, in, in that instant, I know he knew. You know, when you embrace someone, you've got to trust the other person. You can't glance behind to see if there's any imminent danger. You have to face forward and just trust. So why did he embrace me? I closed my arms around him. He knew. I had to do it. He wouldn't see. It wasn't for me. It was for him. Right? Isn't that right? It wasn't supposed to end like this. It wasn't supposed to end like this. What do you want from me? What do you want? You would have done the same thing if you were in my place. What was I supposed to do? The threat was there for all of us. If they could take him, charge and convict him when he had done nothing, what would stop them from taking any of us? I stood up for him. In the garden, when they came to get him, I stood up for him. Well, you saw that, right? I took out my sword and I was ready to die for him. I wasn't aiming for the guy's ear. I was aiming for his head. And if Jesus hadn't stopped me, I would have... Maybe I could have. So, why did I deny him? Why, when the servant girl asked if I knew him, did I say no? She was just a young girl. What was she going to do to me? I just... felt fear. You've got to understand, everything was chaotic. What had started out as an incredible week of people cheering in the streets, waving branches and cheering Jesus' name, had ended with the same people jeering condemnation, calling for his blood. We had just spent time at the Passover, and he was saying things, doing things I didn't understand. He wanted to wash our feet. The master does not wash the servant's feet, I said. No, you're not going to wash my feet. He said, if I don't, then you don't belong to me at all. Oh, I couldn't have that. Jesus was more to me than just a friend. He was my mentor, my rabbi. When I was around him, I felt alive. I, I felt I could do anything. So why did I turn my back on him? Just when he needed me. I turned away. Help me understand. I've been in danger before. So why was today different? Why did I feel so ashamed to be his friend? I just spent the evening with him. We had dinner. Then he asked some of us to pray with him. Pray for what, Lord, I asked. For what is at hand, he answered. I didn't understand. And then things just went out of control. In an instant, the garden was full of people ready to arrest him. Soldiers, police from the high priests, all ready to accuse him of something trumped up. Judas was the one who led them there. I could tell something was up with him. The last few days he was gone from the group quite a bit. I asked him what was keeping him away. And all he said was money business. Then at dinner, Jesus said one of us would betray him. It didn't make any sense. One of us? Who would betray him? 
Now I know who. May he rot in hell! You don't betray a friend! You don't turn your back on- My children, I'm here with you today. For my soul, it is deeply grieved. I've come to Gethsemane to pray. Will you stay? Will you keep watch with me? Why would God send him? His followers insist it's true. <laughs> truth. What is truth? I mean, it's not always so clear. It's elusive as, as liquid. It depends on one's perspective. His innocence was obvious. I mean, that's truth. But it wasn't to be. I tried. I tried to make them see truth. But well, he was sent to me. I didn't ask for the responsibility. The high priests wanted him taken care of. What has he done? I asked them. I mean, he seems harmless enough. He claims to be king of the Jews, they said. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? You know what he said to me? If you say so. Brilliant. Four words and the responsibility was back on me. In that instant, I wondered who was being judged here, this Jewish mystic or myself. Normally, I could have cared less about one more Jew, but... This one was different. 
I could see something in his eyes. I, I could hear it in his voice. My kingdom doesn't consist of what you see around you, he said. I was born and entered this world so I could be witness to the truth. Those that care about the truth recognize my voice. And then he stared at me as if to say, Do you hear my voice? <laughs> Didn't matter if I did. The priests were intent on his death. Oh, I tried to spare him. Three times I pronounced his innocence, but they wouldn't hear of it. If you let this man go, you're no friend to Caesar's, they said. He was innocent. That was obvious. I'm normally killing another Jew wouldn't give me a second thought, but this one. The truth is, I wanted to spare his life. I didn't want to give the high priest any satisfaction, any illusion that they had influence over me. But they did. And then it dawned on me. <laughs> well, if they wanted this man to die, they could take the responsibility. Let it be on their heads. Let them choose. I would be the benevolent one. I would, as their generous procurator, let a prisoner go. It was Passover, after all. Who do you want? Jesus or Barabbas? Your king or this terrorist? Give us Barabbas! Yes. Yes. Give us Barabbas, then. But why? What has this man done? Barabbas! Barabbas, they screamed. But the sound was deafening. Could it really be? They wanted this criminal released instead of this innocent man? Well, what do you want me to do with Jesus? And as if in unison, they screamed, Crucify! Crucify! What was I to do? Defy a mob? Reverse a judgment made by so many? A riot was imminent. So I had him whipped and presented to the crowd. Surely this would satisfy their bloodlust. But nothing would stem their anger. I was pushed to the edge of a cliff. Where do you come from? You know I have the power to let you go or take your life. You will not speak to me. I can take your life. Slowly he raised his head and spoke. You have no power over me unless it has been given to you from above. Then silence. His voice was weak, but as he spoke, I knew I had heard truth. Our thoughts with questions. 
I'm a self-made man. I haven't relied on some generous benefactor or divine providence to determine my destiny. I determine my destiny. To believe otherwise would be weakness. I've built my business on being better and faster than the next guy, and I bow to no one. That was until... It started off as any other day. I was there to do business. A brief negotiation with a trading partner to send livestock and grain to northern Judea. It wasn't anything major. Buy, sell, life. I just finished our meeting and was crossing the marketplace on my way out of the city when I heard this commotion. Now, Jerusalem is usually a quiet place. Rarely is there any civil unrest. Occasionally I hear eruptions by small bands of zealots trying to wrestle power from Rome, but I'd never seen any incident in all my times there. My initial thought was, this must be one of those times. The anger in the crowd was strong. You, you could feel it. And I kept watching as the mob got closer, and I noticed a man carrying a cross. The crowd was focused on him, yelling at him. Some spat on him, others just screamed curses. The religious leaders turned their backs as he stumbled by. Centurion prodded him with a whip. His back was bleeding. He had this hideous crown of thorns on his head that dug into his scalp. He tripped and fell and immediately an observer said, What's wrong, Messiah? The burden too heavy? The crowd laughed. Get up, Jew! shouted the centurion. The broken man was straining to get to his feet, but the cross was too heavy, his body too broken. The whip cut through his back. Get up and walk, demanded the soldier. He tried. Crack! With the whip. Do something, man, I was thinking. Don't let this Roman pig continue to beat you. Stand up! Take the cross, use it as a weapon, fight back, don't allow this man to take your dignity! Move, shouted the guard, another whip lanced his skin, and then another... Stop it, I shouted! Can't you see he can't carry it? The shouting stopped. All eyes were focused on me. Then you carry it, demanded the centurion. Did you hear what I said? Pick up that cross and carry it up that hill or you will join him on that hill. I've never bowed to any man, no matter what their threats, no matter what the consequences, and I wasn't going to start now. What good is a man if he lives in fear, cowering in a corner? Yes, he has his life, but what good is that life? As I started to respond, the man under the cross reached his hand out and touched my tunic was as if he knew my response and wanted to save me from it. I looked down on him and saw the pain in his face. Now, I'm a hard man, but I'm not an unfeeling man. He needed help. He started to get up to continue his journey. I saw him waver, begin to fall. So I reached out and grabbed the cross, his cross. My course was set, my destiny defined, but it was my choice. No words were spoken between us as we walked. The crowd seemed less interested now. Maybe their hatred had been quenched. We finally arrived at a place they called the Skull. I laid the cross down and started to move away. I turned to look at him. One more time, so many thoughts raced through my mind. 
What was this for? What had he done? He seemed like a gentle soul, not a criminal. I didn't see any anger on his face. No desire for revenge on those who owned his destiny. So why was he to die? And just as that thought crossed my mind, he looked up and whispered to me, for you, for you. Here I was helping him, and he was saying this was for me. he die? What has he done to deserve this? He is innocent. All he did was love. Was that a crime? Answer me! No. No, how can I? Is my son, my son. Jesus, I, I cannot breathe. I cannot bear it. God, please. Please. You warned me, Lord. You warned me in the temple that this child you gave me would cause me much grief. I heard your words. I accepted them. But this is more than you asked. It is too painful. Too hard. Why have you done this? 
was I not a good mother? Did I not raise him in your ways? Why am I being punished? Father, where are you? Where is your comfort? Have you walked so far away? This wasn't a part of your plan, was it? How could it be? How could a father deliver his son to death? This death! Take me instead. I... I thirst. He cries out to you. Do you hear him? Have you walked so far away that you do not hear his voice? God, I do not understand. How can I trust? Woman, behold your son. I am here. What can I do? If I could, I would bring you down, hold you in my arms as I did when you were a little boy. I would put salve on your wounds and, and try to heal the pain in your heart. Jesus, my son, my son. breaks at the sight of you, yet can't allow that everything I thought I knew was wrong somehow. Did not God provide your way? Does his hand not guide this day? Could promises God made to me have led to this? Is no one here to help men see that they were amiss? What they say of you are lies. Can't they see you through my eyes? I see you by the dawn's first rays. I hear you laugh, a child at play. My heart is with you every day. My life, my love, my your brow. I long to hold you even now to soothe away your pain somehow. My life, my love, my soul. My love, my song. I clench my fist and yell out loud that no wrong can be found in thee. But they've no sense 
the maddening crowd. They see what they are to see. I see you by the dawn's first rays. I hear you laugh, a child at play. I am Marcus Benjaru, and I will see you in hell! <sighs> they can take nothing from you if you don't hell give in to them. Of the Jews. Where's your throne, king? You can do miracles. Bring yourself down from the cross. They're talking to you, king. Is it true you do miracles? They say you do miracles. Want to get me off this cross? King! Want to get me off this cross? I will make it worth your while. Anything you want, together, we can twist the neck of this Roman scourge and set our people free! A free Palestine! What do you say? I'm not sure... This wasn't supposed to happen. This... Yes, I took what wasn't mine. I'm not an insurrectionist. I'm not an insurrectionist! Uh. Jesus, right? That's your name, right? Talk to me, please. I've known you. I think I've heard you once. Why are you... Oh. Oh. They called you Messiah. Why are you hanging on a Roman cross? I thought they loved you. They seem to. Jesus. Jesus. Are you praying? My God. What are you praying? My God. Why have you forsaken me? What? I didn't understand you. Listen, don't give in to them. Spit in their faces. Last as long as you can. Stare them down. Make them fight for every piece of you. Give them nothing. 
you hear me? Nothing! They want us to beg. When you talk to your God, does he hear you? I need to know, does he hear you? God, you're, you're an imposter. You listening to this, King? They're calling you an imposter. I guess they don't believe in you. No, no, no. Did you hear me? They think you're a fraud. <laughs> What's wrong, Messiah? Are they right? Jesus. Jesus, I think I heard you teach once. You told the people to love your enemies. Was that you? Was that? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. No! Oh, you can't forgive them! No forgiveness! I curse them! I curse the earth they walk on! <clears throat> How do you forgive? They're laughing. They're playing games for your garments. They want your life. They want my life. How do you forgive people who hate you? You don't, King! Right? You strike back! King! King! His name is Jesus. Ah, oh, who cares what his name is? He smells of death, just like you, just like me. Why do they hate you? They hate him for the same reasons they hate you and me. Uh, no. We deserve to be here. I need to know. Are you the Messiah? Does he look like one? Messiah, prove you are who you say you are and save yourself. And save us while you're at it. Nothing. <laughs> See? Nothing! Don't you fear God? I fear no one. Even when you're dying. Oh. He has done nothing wrong! Ah. Father, into your hands I give you my spirit. Jesus. Jesus. Please, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The dead remember nothing. There is nothing. My brother, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Yeah.
God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, my God, my God, why
away, my lord, my savior, my friend. If I could, I would take your place. I would take the nails. I would take the taunting of ignorant men. I've heard them before. They were there before I met you. But you found me. I had no hope. It was but a laugh on someone's lips, someone to use and forget. I had no name but shame, but you saw me. When everyone else turned their eyes to avoid seeing me, you quietly turned and saw me. In my ugliness, I saw in your eyes beauty. In my dead soul, I found life, so I will not look away, my lord. My savior. My friend. It is finished.
Jesus Christ, we call.